So we got a lovely bar magnet oriented in such a way on your hand out there. So, and we are gonna move this bar magnet with a constant velocity to the left towards this lovely loop. And this loop is perfectly perpendicular to the board here as you see it. And so as I move this lovely ma bar magnet to the left, so first of all, where, what direction is the magnetic field pointing at the loop? So due to this bar magnet. So the magnetic field that we feel at this loop, which direction does it point? So which way does the magnetic field lines coming off a bar magnet point? So yeah, we go outside the magnet from north to south. And so in this case, you know, go down around the other side as well. So at the bar, or so at the point where this loop is located, what direction largely is the field going to point? So in this case, it would point, as you, you think about going around and around in bigger and bigger loops, at this point, it actually is going to point to the left. And so the question is, is that magnetic field going to grow or shrink as we start moving the magnet closer to the loop? It's going to grow. Magnetic field is totally distance dependent. The closer this magnet you know, comes to the loop, the greater the magnetic field it's going to feel is. So we're going to define a couple of things here. So first of all, what direction does the magnetic field point at the loop? And in this case, we said left. Now we're going to define something else. That's the change in the strength of the magnetic field. What direction does that point? So the change in the strength of magnetic, well, again, is the magnetic field growing or shrinking? Growing. So if you look at this, this is analogous to like, you know, velocity versus acceleration. If I'm traveling this way, let's say, and I'm speeding up, then which way does acceleration point? I'm speeding up. Same way. So if, if you're traveling in a certain direction and you're speeding up, then your acceleration also points in the same direction. Cool with that? And notice, what is the definition of acceleration? change in velocity over change in time. And so in this case, if your velocity points one way and it's getting faster, that means your change in velocity also points the same direction. However, if I was traveling this way but slowing down, maybe coming to a stop or maybe just slowing down, then which way would the actual acceleration or change in velocity, same diff, it point the opposite direction. So we have the same kind of thing here. The magnetic field points to the left where the loop is located. And because it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's increasing in magnitude, then the change in the magnetic field must also point also left as well. <clears throat> cool, and I don't really care about the change in the magnetic field specifically. What I really want is the change in the magnetic flux here. So your magnetic flux is B A cosine theta. And as long as it's changing in one of the three ways it can change, we'll induce an EMF in our loop. So in this case, which of these three was actually changing? B. And that's why I didn't worry about A and cosine theta. I worried about the change in B. But what I really wanted to show was the change in the magnetic flux. And since the change in B is to the left, and that's how the flux is changing, then the change in your flux is also to the left. So the question is actually then, in which direction are we going to induce a current in here as viewed from this left-hand side? So in this case, we've got a change in magnetic flux pointing to the left. We need to generate a current in this lovely wire. If you guys recall a circular loop, right hand rule says if you curl your fingers in the direction of the current, your magnetic field at the center will be your thumb. So in this case, if I go counterclockwise, which way would the magnetic field at the center of the loop point? Yeah, out of the board towards you guys. However, on the other hand, if your magnetic field was going around, I'm sorry, if your current was going around clockwise, where would the magnetic field at the center of the loop point? So into the board instead. So in this case, wherever your magnetic field points is wherever the magnetic flux that's resulting from the current points as well. And so here's the deal. We need to oppose this guy. Our current we generate in the loop is going to create a magnetic field and a magnetic flux that is opposite in direction to this. Not to the flux itself, but to the change in the flux. And they point in the same direction in this case. Your magnetic flux and your change of magnetic flux both point left. But we'll see a big difference here shortly. 
So in this case, I need to generate a magnetic flux and a magnetic field with my current that points to the right to oppose it. And so the question is going around to this loop, viewing it from my perspective from this left-hand side, which way do I actually want to curl my hands, this way or this way? Yeah, and so from my point of view, they're going around this way, and from looking at it from the left, that would be clockwise or counterclockwise. So from the left, from my, from my perspective, the left-hand side. So that's how the question finds it. So as perceived from the left. So I want to generate a magnetic field and magnetic flux as a result of my current that opposes this, that's opposite this. So, well, in this case, we're not going to look at it from head on because this loop right here so is pointing sideways, right? In fact, uh, let's grab a prop. Hold on. All right. I've got a loop. Sweet. So this loop is not oriented this way. It's oriented this way. And so as viewed, not from head on, because you can't see the loop from that side, but from this side, from the left, not from the right, but from the left, the question is then, which way does the current need to go, clockwise or counterclockwise, as viewed from this side? And notice I had to tell you which side to view it, because clockwise on this side looks like counterclockwise if you view it from the right side. And that's because we need to oppose the... We need to oppose the change in magnetic flux. That's what Lenz's law says. So you need to go right this way. And so in this case, I need to curl this way to get a magnetic field and magnetic flux going right. And that's going to be clockwise, as viewed from the left. If you view it from this side, that would appear to be counterclockwise. But as viewed from this side, so it's going to be clockwise. Cool with that? OK, so now we got a little bit different situation. Same loop, same bar magnet, but now we're pulling the bar magnet away from the loop. So again, my first question is, at the location of the loop, what direction does the magnetic field point? Right. Still left, still left. And because the magnetic field points left, the magnetic flux is going to point left as well. As I move this bar magnet away from the loop, is the strength of the magnetic field, and therefore the strength of the magnetic flux, going to be increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. So the flux points left, but it's decreasing, which means the change in flux must point the opposite direction to the right. That's the important part. So a lot of students get hung up looking at where the flux points. That's not what you're looking at. You're looking at the change in flux. And so if your flux points a certain direction and is increasing, then the change in flux points the same direction. If the flux points a certain direction but is decreasing, then your change in flux points the opposite direction. And this is what we need to oppose according to Lenz's law. So in this case, I need to have a current flowing through this wire. So again, I got, I got my loop. So I'll set up that lovely loop sideways here. And from the left-hand perspective, I want to generate a current that leads to a magnetic field and a magnetic flux that points to the left. So which way do I need to go now? Counterclockwise from this perspective. Is this starting to make any more sense? Cool. Let's do a couple more. All right, what if I change to number three here relative to number two? The orientation of the magnet, yeah. So in this case, what direction do the magnetic field lines point at the location of the loop due to the presence of the bar magnet? Yeah, they now point to the right. So again, if our field lines go out about that way, then at the location of the loop, they're going to actually point to the right. So the first part is that our magnetic field points to the right at the location of the loop, and therefore the magnetic flux points to the right. Question then is which way does the change the magnetic flux point? So in this case, which way are we moving the magnet relative to the loop? Towards it or away from it? Away from it. What's that going to do to the strength of the magnetic field at the location of the magnet? Well, again, the magnetic field depends on how close I am to the magnet. Notice the further I move it away, the less the magnetic field at the location of the loop is going to be. So the magnetic field strength is actually decreasing. Therefore, the magnetic flux at this location will be decreasing over time. So the flux points to the right, but it's decreasing, which means my change in flux points left, the opposite direction. 
And again, that's what I need to pose according to Lenz's law. So in this case, my loop, which way do I need to generate a current? Well, again, the flux due to this current is going to point which direction? To the right. I need to oppose that guy. And so how do I accomplish that? Clockwise, as perceived from the left. Cool. OK, problem number four. Got a loop, and I'm going to orient this loop just like so. I've labeled one point on the loop just for reference point, so it's easy to see which way this thing is rotating. So at t equals 0 seconds, the plane of the loop is completely parallel to the magnetic field. What should the magnetic flux be at this point, by the way? So what should the magnetic flux be? I'm actually looking for a number. or the complete absence of a number. Ooh, in this case, we're completely parallel to the magnetic field, which means we're 90 degrees away from the normal. And so it's cosine 90, which is 0. So there's no magnetic flux right now. That's one thing to note. So we initially start a, a situation where there's no magnetic flux. So this thing's now going to rotate, and the part with the marked red dot is going to move away from you to this point, one quarter turn. So the whole loop's just rotating one quarter turn over the course of two seconds. So, and that's kind of here, this is darker because it's closer to you and the part that's marked red is the part that's further away from you in the back. So it's 90 degrees straight out of the board. So, at this point, what direction does the flux point? So in this case, the field lines are pointing to the right, and they're passing through my loop. So it's now perpendicular. So it's to the right. So notice here, what flux did we have? Zero. zero. If I turn it the slightest amount, is it still zero? No. no. Which way would it point? Which way are the field lines going to pass through my loop? To the left or to the right? Well, they all point to the right, so they got to pass through to the right. So the flux would still pass, you know, point to the right. And as I keep turning this, what's happening to the flux? It's, bigger. it's getting bigger. Cool. We don't actually have to quantify it. We don't even have to actually look at the cosine theta. If you conceptually realize that as I turn this, as it gets closer and closer to being perpendicular, more and more field lines are going to be passing through it. And so in this case, if we kind of look over the passage of time, it, our flux really starts at zero. But the majority of the time, once I've turned it the smallest little fraction, which way does our flux point? To the right. Is it growing or shrinking during this period of time? It's growing. So which way does it change in the flux point? Also to the right. And so in this case, that's, again, what I need to oppose, that change in flux. And so again, at this point in time, so which way do I actually need to? So I need to generate a magnetic flux to the left. And which way does current need to go to do that? So counterclockwise is looked at from which side right here? So what the question didn't say look at it from the left or the right. What did the question in this one actually say? What perspective are we supposed to look at this with? Relative to the t equals 0 diagram, tell me if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. So if I, if I turn this one just like this, do I need to look at it from the left or from the right to kind of keep that perspective? So from the right. So in this case, as it turns, if I want to keep that perspective, I have to turn with it to the right. And so that's the perspective I'm going to look at it with to make it relative to that diagram. And so in this case, if I want to oppose that guy, I need to pick this guy, and we're going to go around clockwise relative to this original diagram. Cool with that? All right. So in looking at our magnetic flux, uh, we need our magnetic flux to change, to induce an EMF, and to induce a current in a closed loop. So in this case, we've looked at examples where we change the strength of the magnetic field by moving a bar magnet either closer or further from a loop. We've looked at changing the angle theta by rotating the loop in a constant magnetic field. What's the only thing we haven't looked at yet? 
change in the area of the loop. And that's what we're going to look at here. So this loop is of such a, a nature that I can actually constrict it and make it smaller. And so in this case, we're going to take this loop and it starts out initially with a radius of 0 0.3 meters at time zero. But in five seconds, it's going to constrict to a radius of only 0.1 meters. And because the area is changing, that means the flux is going to be changing. And if the flux is changing, we'll generate an EMF and a current in this thing. Now, if we look at this for a second, what direction does the magnetic flux point? Right this loop. Oh. Or sorry, in. Sorry, in. Good. Good, into the board. Now, as this loop gets smaller and smaller and smaller, will the number of field lines passing through the loop be growing or shrinking? Shrinking. Shrinking. Which means the change in your flux must, must point where? Out the opposite direction. So again, if your flux is shrinking rather than growing, decreasing rather than increasing, then your change in flux points the opposite way. So instead of into the board, it'll be out of the board. So this, again, is what I need to oppose according to Lenz's law. So which way is the current going to be going in this loop from our perspective looking at it? So well, again, which way is the current going to go, though, clockwise or counterclockwise, this perspective? Yeah, we're going to go clockwise. That way I can generate a magnetic field at the center pointing into the board and a magnetic flux pointing into the board. So we've answered the second half here. The second half was the qualitative part of this, just what direction is the current going. But the first half of the question is then, what is uh, the actual induced current in this? I'm sorry, what is the actually induced EMF in the loop? So, and whose law do we get, get that from? Faraday's. So how many turns of wire do we have here? How many loops? Just one. Cool, our change in flux here is change in B A cosine theta over the change in time. Which part of this is changing again in this case? It's A that's changing. What's our theta? How far is the plane of our loop from the normal to the magnetic field? Zero, yeah. It is already perpendicular to the magnetic field, so we have a cosine of zero, which is one. So this term goes away. And so in this case, we have change in B times A, since theta is not changing at all. And in this case, that's really B times the change in A, since B is also not changing. What's the strength of our magnetic field? 0.5 Tesla. Now change in area here. What's the area of a circular loop? Pi r squared. What's the final pi r squared? So there's our final pi r squared, final area, minus the initial area. Let's not put that parenthesis there, let's just do that. And then what's our change in time? Good. So there's our calculation. Anybody get me an induced EMF here? Technically, I did this calculation, I got negative 0.025 volts. What's the negative mean again, though? The yeah, it's just about the direction part. So if you actually had to report this answer, like what's the induced EMF, you'd probably just say 0.025 volts. The negative, again, just means Lenz's law, that the flux resulting from the current in the loop opposes the change in flux. How would you get a negative number because it's not a negative and it cancel with the... Ooh, you're right, actually. Oh, I'm going to take that back. This should be negative as well, and a negative times a negative is a positive. You are right and I am wrong. My bad. <laughs>